I'll tell you what folks, over the years my fridge has seen some sights indeed. Hello everybody, hope you are well. Welcome to our kitchen. Today, we, do you know what they are? Custard creams! Custard creams, we're doing something that came to my mind last night. I was like, this sounds amazing. A lot of you guys at the moment are asking me for uh, something called a custard slice. Do you know what that is? No. You see that? That is a custard slice co, right? It's like a wedge of custard wedged between pastry. And you do different versions of them with the ice on top. But I had this idea for a hack involving... Custard creams! Yes! I'm going to try today to make a custard slice out of custard creams. If you don't know what custard creams are, they're very popular biscuits here in the UK. In fact, I've done homemade versions of them. Didn't you do a giant one? I did do a giant I one as well. That. Yeah, I did. And the cool thing is with custard creams and baubles and a few things like that is there's not a particular brand. They just exist as custard cream. Can you see it's got that sort of emblem match thing on it? But what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this as our pastry alternative. I'm gonna lose Chloe in about half an hour. She's gonna be my little assistant helper, right? So I have got an amazing, amazing job for you, Chloe. <laughs> I need you to keep this, right, for the crust. So we're gonna get a tray, but the cream filling, I wanna keep that. Do you reckon you can- Oh, I love doing that whenever I eat them. And by the end, we're gonna make a homemade custard with that filling in there, and I hope it's gonna wedge it all together. Do you think it's gonna work? Yes, but I have one question. Is it a giant one? Well, it will be big, yeah but you can slice it up and stuff. Okay. This might fail. It might make them all go soggy. That is highly likely, but if it works. How about calm down for a minute? <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna do is grab ourselves a tray like this. There's no set rules to this. What I'm gonna do is get Chloe to first get the custard creams out and can you just arrange them? Yeah? Cause I just wanna see how many we can get on there. Need some more bags. Yeah. <gasps> we can't use that one. <gasps> no. <laughs> well, you were doing very well, but now you've given up. <laughs> it's like, oh, I've done a few rows, so surely that deserves a biscuit, right? Oh my gosh, that's a perfect fit down there. Look at that. Now, the bad news is we've got to take them all off in a minute because I want to line it. Are you sure you couldn't have done that first? No, I need to see how many we need. Yes, my friend. Okay, so what I think, I'm gonna, when I pour the custard on, it could escape. So I'm probably gonna have to put something here to stop it spilling down. But other than that, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six sixes? Good six. Yes, mate. You're smart. So we need to get the cream out of 36 custard creams without breaking them. So let me just try to do the first one. We're gonna take this biscuit and we're gonna go straight down the middle through the fondant please oh no <gasps> oh. we've got a spare <gasps> yeah! be very careful go actually do it that way so it's um flatter like that yes mate yeah i think you need to do it so there's like a bigger surface area don't go when it's like that yes so what do we need to do now, chef? So chef, whilst I replace the damaged custard cream, can you please scrape very gently the cream into this bowl? I'll go get another custard cream. There we go, yes. Go through when it's facing width side down like that, where it's wider like that. We've got another 35 or 34 to go. <gasps> this is basically our life. Oh no, another one broken. It's getting pretty tense now. I've got no more spares left. I've used up all the other ones there. The only thing that I've found is that the broken ones, the other half, I've managed to salvage it. Uh, so fingers crossed, I don't break any more. I'll let you know. <laughs> it's like, <sighs> that's nearly there. I've got four more to do. And just as a tip, if you do do this, go through with a knife. Okay, because they've got a very tiny serration on them, little table knives, but don't even use this. Can you go in the biscuit tin and <laughs> see if we've got a, one custard cream? Uh, yeah, because I'm legitimately out. Please tell me you found one. What, what are you doing? You haven't been... 
<gasps> Give that to me right now. It has Oreo bits on it, but... Does it? That'll do. Oh, yes. And what I meant to show you was like with a knife when it's serrated like that, rather than the spoon, if you just do a little shimmy around, it comes off really easy. Cause that looks like a bowl of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> but I promise you, as we went and found out when we made homemade ones, this would be a gorgeous custard buttercream. Oh, actually, do you want to try a taste of that? Take a little piece, it'd be nice. <laughs> What's it taste of? Custard creams. <laughs> Mwah. So, check this out. This is my invention, which will hopefully hold it together because I don't want any custard seepage, which could make <laughs> this whole thing fail. Fingers crossed. All right, so this is the baking tray from earlier that we uh, worked out how many custard creams are fit in. I'm lining it with foil generously on the widths because that was where we had the gaps, right? Yes. So if we've got enough uh, slack in our foil, we can bunch it up and hopefully wedge them in because I'm really worried that the custard could just go bleh, bleh, bleh. That's the official term, all right? Bleh. We're gonna line the foil with some baking parchment, so a little bit more of a non-slip texture on there. And what we do is we're gonna put the first layer, so I'm gonna grab the custard creams, Oh, actually, yeah. I was like, why are you being so cautious? Because if you drop them, this video ends now. <laughs> Biscuit number one. Biscuit number one of 36. So it says custard cream one way up, okay? So that, that. So what I'm gonna do is make it so it says custard cream, maybe it's a bit OCD, all facing this way. Thank Biscuit you. number two. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Biscuit number three. I think we might just have to, this might go very slow. I think we just might have to fast forward it. Transition. So we teleported back into the future and as you can see, we've still only done three. <laughs> in there. Yes, mate. Oh, look, it's a little bit, yeah. Got to push it right in. The width is perfect along there. But I say we do have these gaps at either end, which is why we'll use the foil, okay? Okay. Oh, look, Chloe. They ain't even budging now. They wedged in. All right, so we'll see Chloe again at the end once this thing is ready, if it even works. We've got to get it to chill, but now we make the custard. Uh, we were using some custard powder, which we used uh, when we made the homemade custard creams, custard powder in the biscuit and in the uh, filling that we have now removed, which we'll then put back into this custard. So a little saucepan and we'll get it going. Yeah, here's our custard powder and it's almost got a slight pink tinge to it, um, but we just shimmy it in here. And I've got a litre of milk, but I'm only gonna add in about 20% of that. Cause I find if I do that and just whisk it through, yeah, it's just personal preference, but I find that that works really well if I add a little bit of milk initially. Whisk until it's smooth, and then add in the rest of the milk. Oh yeah. And a little bit of sugar as well. And just to give it a little bit of punch, one, two good old drops of vanilla extract, which genuinely, genuinely smells of vodka. It is a video on coming up very soon. I'm making homemade vanilla extract if you're interested. Um, hopefully it's not just a bottle of Smirnoff. <laughs> yeah, you see it's just starting to come to a simmer. It might look like much is happening, but as you put your whisk in, see, I'm lifting this up now. Do, 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 do. You need to keep whisking it, otherwise it could burn your pan, but it is. Oh, that's sticking up. Look at that. That's literally happened as I've been recording. Amazing. Right. Let's turn that heat down to low because we do want to cook it whilst it's pretty much, look, pop for me. There you go. There we go. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> we do want to keep it on a low heat just to keep it cooking for just like one to two more minutes. All right. Ooh, angry custard, but a nice color. All right. So another two minutes on a low heat and that has thickened up gorgeously. Look at that. And it will obviously thicken up more as it cools, which is what I'm hoping for, for this whole thing to work. But let's now add in the filling from the custard creams straight in there. And so the weird thing is in that filling, there used to be custard powder. So it's kind of like, hey, how have you been doing? Oh, not too bad. Nice to meet you again. Really happy with that. This, as you can see, is still very, the color is amazing, isn't it? <laughs> it's still quite warm. So I just don't want to damage anything. I'm just going to let it stand for like 20 minutes, maybe half an hour, spread it on, and that should hold it together with the other layer. 
No, so I'm saying should. <laughs> For most of this recipe, it should. The aim is to coat it all along there and then get the very patiently waiting ones to go back on top. Yes, friends. Look at that. Mrs. B will kill me if I don't remove that. It's the sort of thing that happens to me when I step out into reality, like I might walk the dogs whilst we chill this in a minute, uh, and like, I generally have got some custard powder there on my t-shirt, and I'll just be walking the dogs, and somebody like, oh, you've got a little, uh... yeah, it's just custard powder, it's just, yeah, it's just what I do. The actual really cool thing is, if this works, and I keep saying that, uh, is we'll actually have potentially nice individual portion sizes if I line it up correctly. Uh, oh dear. Oh, it's moving. Oh no! Oh, I've got to be delicate. I think the tactic is to dollop it on, cover all the corners and then spread it, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's not something you see every day, is it? <laughs> but just where they join, um, if I get those gaps covered first of all, that should put us in fairly good stead to just level it all out, okay. I just hope it grips it. <laughs> it's actually really soothing. It's quite fun to do. So now we line the biscuits that we've left on the side up with the biscuits at the bottom, which I now can no longer see, but luckily we do have this template. The one thing I do know is that it was right in that corner there. I just hope the biscuits don't go soggy as well once they go in the fridge. Oh, there's so many things I haven't thought about. I'm like, oh no. You can see where this is going. See you in a minute. I'm so glad we had that one last biscuit because this would have really, really bugged me. That actually looks really cool, doesn't it? Let's put the last one in. I would suggest doing it after about 10 minutes whilst the custard is still warm because as I'm finding, as this is really cooling down, it's kind of getting more springy and harder for it to bite into. But that, <laughs> that looks really awesome. I love all the intricate designs. It's like a tapestry. We can cut wedges out. Oh, that was what I visioned, the dream. Unfortunately, I'm now gonna put this in the fridge for a minimum of three hours for it to fully firm up so we can get a good old slice out of it. I'll tell you what folks, over the years, my fridge has seen some sights indeed. Right, see you in four hours. Then folks, it has been four hours. I've just got back, uh, did a little bit, a few errands around town, sent off some uh, little giveaways and stuff. And I'm very excited to see this like vision come to life. It should be firm and chilled. Let's see what it turns out like. <laughs> Here it is. It probably looks no different to you whatsoever, but this tray is ice cold. And hopefully, um, it should have a little bit of movement in it, but I can probably lift this thing out. <laughs> okay, I'll just rip that away. That is a proper custard slice. It smells so custardy, I feel like I'm in prison. Check that out. That is so simple, but fun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I should have done that. Oh no, I can get in here. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> That's blooming stonking. Check out that. <laughs> I kind of want to dust it with icing sugar and I don't know, take it up an extra notch, but I just like the simplicity of it. You can't deny that is a custard, a double custard slice. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see what this tastes like. Do you know what? I blooming love that. <laughs> I don't know what next. Like, this is Barry's playlist, Barry's hybrids. Maybe like a molten lava cake from actual molten lava. Ooh. Wow, that is super custardy. It's like an intense flavor of it. The actual base part of it, it almost feels like it's slightly merged with the custard more than the top. There's a softness to it. It kind of lost the crunch of the biscuit, but not too much. It's held together. It's not crumbly. It's not gummy. That is blooming gorgeous. Mm. I just literally ate that whole piece. It just goes down so well. The intensity of that custard flavor. I was so worried when I was doing my editing, walking the dogs, went for some lunch just to get out because otherwise I'd be like, no, no, I've got to keep checking it, that it was going to be some weird like biscuity mass merged together, but it has actually worked. So if you like this idea as a concept, perhaps not the volcano idea, but if you've got a hybrid recipe idea, do let me know down below and I'll tackle it. And if you try this, how simple was that? It was like, it's actually like, it's like a dream. 
We've made a dream reality for me today and I'm, I'm really, really proud. I can't wait to see what Chloe thinks of it. But if you do try it, do send me a photo on your social media of choice. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure you have the notification button turned on so that you get uh, told about new video uploads. And uh, that's, that's it, it's blooming gorgeous. I just gotta make sure that I don't eat any more of it because it is so good. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. Today's one of those days where Mrs. B's gone to work and has no idea when she walks home what I've done. Sometimes that freaks her out. Actually, that's understandable. Um, but she does love custard slice, let alone custard cream. She loves those too. So this should go down really, really well. The only thing is Mrs. B does like to have things all round the right way. And I get lots of people do this. Some people, you know, extreme cases, labels all round the right way. I'm, I get that, but I'm totally not like that at all. Now, there was a perfect opportunity to put a piece back and I have done it right there. <laughs> I replaced the one that I ate and I've left this gap in the middle and they all say custard cream up the right way. And I'm just gonna turn one round. So it says Murk Draxuk. You like it? They look very, very good. Apart from, why did you try one in the middle and not from the edge and work your way in? I've been rumbled, see? That was really, well. And there's one that's upside down. I knew you'd spot that as well. I just went and grabbed my camera. I was like, I could see you going, having a little look. Mmm. Mmm. All good? Very nice. Very custardy. Yes. That's it. Like really intense mm. custard, isn't it? I like it a lot. Well, there we go. Family approved. Make sure you turn it up the right way and take it from the outside in and everyone's happy. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.